When talking about bike upgrades, there is perhaps one area that makes a bigger difference than any other. We are, of course, talking about wheels. Now, we've tested hundreds of wheel sets over on Road TC over the last few years. Some are good, and it has to be said, some are less good. One thing has become clear, and that is it's not as easy as it may at first seem to create wheels that are both cost-effective and actually nice to ride, especially now that the sector is competitive as it is today. And that's why we're here in West Sussex, at the Hunt HQ no less, a brand that just can't seem to keep both its carbon and alloy wheels out of our end of year awards and buyer's guides. We'll be taking a look at the in-house testing that goes on right here in the UK, finding out if Hunt does indeed use off-the-shelf parts and or open moulds, and having a chat with the engineers about what's next. Right, well, I'm joined by Pete Marchment, who is co-founder of Hunt. So if there's anyone to talk to about how it's a successful business, then you're the guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I mean... <laughs> so where did it all start? We spec'd up a range of four wheels and the, the idea of what we were doing, we were only working on aluminium wheels at the time. Yep. Um, and it was all about right, well, what, is, what is this wheel set going to be used for? What's the, what's the purpose of it? And then if that's our purpose, if that's the reason for it to exist, how do we then go through and look at all the different details of what goes into that rim, spoke, hubs, you know, down to the nipples, down to the QR skewers, the bearings, every little part of that. And that was where the name Hunt came from. It was like hunting for all of the little benefits oh, okay. and the little details yeah. that you could put into into that product. Those first road disc brake wheels that have been brought out by other companies, because it was a brand new technology, they were often brought out on the most expensive, the highest end, highest performance wheel, and actually you know, race, full on racing wheels. And we were looking at it and going, well, the biggest benefits of disc brakes, the pioneers of people who are gonna really be using that and really be riding that is actually for that all season, yeah. where you want a fast feeling road bike, you don't want to be feeling like you're not on something that's performing really, really well, but actually you want it to be able to take all of the abuse of a, of a British winter. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously there's loads of wheel brands out there offering <laughs> wheels, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, how, can you, do you think you can put it down to one thing, why Hunt is, well, responsible for six out of 10 of our award-winning wheel sets? Like everything we're doing and the decisions we're making, it's not in the service of anything, but making the best product for the rider. Um, and when we're thinking about what that spec decision is or whether we should put some money into a particular element of that wheel, it's not about what that margin might look like at the end of it or what the RRP is gonna be. It's like, it's almost comes down to really, well, would I put that on my wheel if I'm making it for me, which is really what we are doing. We've obviously at Road CC reviewed tens of hunt wheel sets for road, gravel, all of it. And under each and every one, I wouldn't mind betting that there's comments from skeptics saying that oh, they're just rebadging Chinese wheels and stuff like that. Now, I can see quite a lot of engineering here, but what would you say to those people that are claiming that Hunt's just a marketing company? Yeah, um, well, I mean, hopefully anyone who's spent a little bit of time with us can probably see some of the work that we put into developing product that's both in terms of the engineering side and in terms of how you bring that whole package of that product through. Going to it directly, there's a, there's a big team of engineers that we, em, we employ full time, plus two product managers working on Hunt, one of whom is a mechanical engineer as well. Um, so there's, there's a good group of people. So something like Limitless, where we're really trying to push the absolute edge of aerodynamics, that development process could take 12 months. Yeah. Um, a lot of the R&D that we do in house is quite iterative and a lot of the 3D printing, we will then take to the winter lot at that stage. So we've got kind of prototypes and then you need to go back and assess whether you can move forward or not. So yeah, could be six months if it goes really well. It could be 18 months if, if we need to like reiterate that process a few times. Uh, so for the 48 limitless wheel or the 42 gravel limitless wheel, yeah. you know, that's a project which we run start to finish. We CFD those profiles and we develop 3D printed shapes we take those to a wind tunnel, we test them, we refine that external shape, and then we work with a supplier. Um, most of those are in Taiwan, mainland Taiwan, or in, or in China, um, and we work with them to then create that mold and then create a layup that creates the uh, physical characteristics that we need within that shape. And that's really yeah. what that process looks like from start to finish. 
if we're talking about a limitless wheel, something mm -hmm. that really needs to be aerodynamically optimized, we will utilize our sort of CFD resources. Computational what, fluid dynamics, yeah? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. How come you don't just do everything in the wind tunnel? The big thing with CFD is it lets us develop and iterate many more times and much more quickly. So here we have our 3D printer with um, our fancy ass um, <laughs> microwave, which basically cures, the, <laughs> well, cures what we get out yeah. to make it harder and less soft. And what are you making? Because this, to me, doesn't look like much. Yes, so... <laughs> what, are you doing, what are you doing with that? <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is actually how it comes out of the 3D printer itself. Mm -hmm. So here we have what it prints on. So it go, in the 3D printer, it goes down. Oh, okay. And there's a bath under here, in yeah. here with um, all the liquid resin. Mm -hmm. Then there's a laser scanner underneath, which then prints out the shape it wants for each layer. And then it yeah. slowly moves up, building each layer and layer and layer until you get a whole one of these. Okay, so what does this look like once you've removed everything? So once we removed um, the support material, um, we end up with a series of pieces like this which essentially jigsaw together nicely. Mm -hmm. um, we have five in the front, six in the rear. Um, and we glue them together and we strap them to make sure that they're all solid and we leave it for 24 hours and out pops a rim. Even though we can now print our 3D prototypes in-house, it takes roughly 48 hours to print a mm -hmm. whole section's worth wheels and then it takes another day to glue them and then you've got to build it and then take it to a wind tunnel. Yeah. And so all of this we probably can do, we could do a couple of profiles a week. On the most recent Limitless profile, we did 45 iterations on the front profile and then yeah. something similar again for the rear. And so that it means we could, yeah, <laughs> there'd be a lot of printing, it'd be a lot of resin. It wouldn't be very efficient. We couldn't be as quick and mm -hmm. we couldn't try things that we weren't confident that that's the right direction. I've noticed that this wheel has a lot of funny dots on it. What are they all about? These funny dots, these are tracking dots which help our 3D scanner pick up where the object it's looking at is in 3D yep. space. So to scan in this tire profile, which is important for CFD to get an accurate tire profile because that is a large part of the aerodynamic profile that is having to go through the wind. Okay, so you're not yeah. just designing the wheel, you're designing a wheel with a tire on. Exactly, yeah, yeah, because it's how you ride them most of the time. I do. <laughs> That's when they're fastest. But I guess you always want to then go and validate this in the wind tunnel. Exactly. exactly. And so we'll always take our final profiles to the wind tunnel. Yeah. And that's where we can get the real world drag data. So mm -hmm. we're using this predominantly to rank profiles. We're not trying to get real world results. And so yeah. get real drag figures and then to compare against competitors and see how we stack up. Yeah. The wind tunnel will always be the gold standard of an aero test. After all that design work, I guess we end up with something that looks a bit like this. This is the limitless wheel. Something that I've ridden and I never knew the amount of work that went into it. So I never knew it was once a plastic wheel like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I got this one and not this one. <laughs> That's for sure. And if we're talking about like off the shelf parts, yeah. let's take the, the limitless wheels yeah. for example. I've been riding around on them a bit. How many of those parts are off the shelf and how so, many of you designed? So the limitless wheel, that rim is totally engineered from start to finish by yeah. us. Um, the hub is in partnership with the supplier so they've developed the hub internals and we've had a relationship with them for like nine years and been so that's not the original generation we've developed that with them and made tweaks and changes based on our input to that there'll be other projects where it's an let's say for an aluminium rim where at one end we might be doing a full fea so that's finite element analysis so that's where you're using a computer simulation to simulate the stresses on that wheel so that it's got the right impact and fatigue strength that we mm -hmm. want. Um, and then we will create a mold um, and extrude those rims to that unique mold. But there are also projects where if the only purpose of creating that mold is to make it look different or to make yeah. it make us able to say that it's a closed mold product, like the purpose of what we're trying to do is actually make the best thing that we can. And if all it does is to make something look different, that's that's not what we see as the best way to spend the money because that's spending the money for us as a business not for <laughs> not for the person who's actually going to ride that uh, so so far we've talked a lot about serving the rider and that obviously includes designing the wheels for them but what else does 
does that include? Yeah, so I think a, you know, a big part of it is how you look after someone on that whole journey from you know, actually even before they bought the wheels, how you uh, work with people to help them understand what they, what they want, um, mm -hmm. what's the right wheel for them, through to getting it through the door and then the service that comes with you know, being looked after as a rider the whole time you're owning that wheel. Our kind of mantra here, you know, is like, you know, we're here to kind of serve the rider. So ultimately we want to do, we want to make them kind of happy, we want them to have the kind of the, the best product, we want them to have the right product for their, for their kind of their needs and for their kind of discipline to sign yeah. in. And, you know, hopefully with that, we can, we can help advise and if they do have an issue, we can help put it right as well. So, I mean, classically on live chat as well, you get someone who's maybe bought a new frame, it's a different axle standard. Mm -hmm. Can we get the kind of the axle adapters to swap their existing wheel set over? Which, you know, 99 times out of 100, we'll just send them out for them free of charge. It's a bit of a good wheel just so we go, you know, you got our wheels, here you go. You had a 135 QR, there's some 142 axles for you to you know, yep. get your wheels kind of compatible with the bikes. We offer a 60 day ride in return. People can try the wheels, they can ride them, they can even race them, they can do whatever they like. And if they actually think, you know, hey, what, I want a, a deep perception wheel, or I want, you know, uh, on the mountain bike side, they might want a slightly wider rim or whatever it might be. We can swap the wheels across for them. Um, and we do that effectively and at, at no cost to the rider. This, you know, we, we want them to, to be on brand and there's something else I think it's pretty cool that we do. We will arrange for, the, for their existing wheel set to be collected. We will ship out a replacement set of wheels. If there's a price mm -hmm. differential, the rider will pay. But yep. we, we cover all the kind of logistics for, for doing that. And I think, that's, yeah, again, that's a, that's a pretty kind of strong, strong tool, which people mm. really appreciate as well. We've got a team of full-time UK-based dedicated wheel builders who can yep. perform everything from warranty through to athlete custom builds and things like that. So um, whether you're claiming under the wheel's three-year warranty or if your wheel has H care, things happen, people ride into sharp things, <laughs> heavy things and have accidents. So um, we just need to make sure that we're in a position where we can get people sorted out and get them back on the road as quickly as possible. Part of being able to keep a wheel running is being able to service it. I know of a few like Triggers Broom type hunt wheels <laughs> out there that have done 60, 70,000 miles plus where people have changed a rim and then changed you know, hub internals and changed spokes as they've needed to, but essentially you can just keep going. We have the spokes for every wheel we've ever made. Ever, ever made? Yeah. So you can, so my six year old hunt wheel set, if well, I- We still have some of the spokes, if, yeah. You've got to be going some before a wheel <laughs> is, is like, you know, beyond economical repair. You'd have to like yeah. snap every smoke, snap the rim and somehow crack the hub shell or in the same accident. So really everything is repairable and we'll always try to, to repair rather than replace. It's just about being really flexible and adaptable. And we've got pe the people who are doing that for us in the business are all riders. They're all people who, are, who understand what it's like to not have your bike available. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that's the biggest and most important thing that helps is if the person who's helping you solve that problem understands why it matters. Because um, if, if you can get it back in time for the weekend or yeah. for when you're wanting to go for a ride, <laughs> that makes a massive difference. So there we go. Hopefully that's managed to clear a few things up. You can check out our full reviews of nearly all the wheels featured in this video over on the Road to Sea website. Or if you want to see how the carbon spoke Hunt 60 Limitless or Hunt 50 Carbon Aero Disc wheel sets got on in our independent real world speed testing, then use the banner popping up on your screen right about now. As always, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you found this content interesting. And let us know in the comments section below which set of hunt wheels are your favorites. We'll see you next time. Oh yes. And we could keep we going forever and ever like this because it's so satisfying. <laughs>